We begin in Ukraine, where the bitterly cold reality of daily life is setting in as Russian airstrikes on the country's power facilities continue. Across the country, authorities have set up thousands of centres for people to charge their phones, continue to work and perhaps most importantly, to simply warm up. In the dead of winter, DW's Emmanuel Schatz reports on the new normal that Ukrainians are adapting to. Borsel is a suburb on the outskirts of Kyiv. Viktor survived the Russian occupation and now must survive the winter. Constant airstrikes on power facilities cut electricity and running water to his entire building. So he makes do as best as he can. We fill bottles with hot water. Somewhere I already hit a hot water bottle. As for food for the fridge, we try not to buy anything like that. Just as we speak, a surprise. The power comes back on. And so does the heat, for a while at least. Whenever Victor doesn't have electricity, he comes here, a small prefab installed by the authorities so that residents can charge their phones and warm themselves up around the stove. A short drive away is Butcha. The city council is now a rallying point for those without electricity. It is one of thousands of what President Zelensky calls invincibility centers. In fact, the Butcha City Council is now a social hub where a generator works and where you can charge phones. And most people don't come here for social services, but because there is no electricity at home, no water at home. Here you can collect water, you can connect to the internet. Here residents study, work and stay in touch with their relatives online. Those invincibility centres are crucial for Ukrainians to simply survive. The air red siren goes off, but here, nobody seems to care anymore. I don't really like it here. I would rather sit at home with a light on. But you need to charge your phone so you can call your relatives. I came to recharge my mobile phone. I just want to pay my utility bills. And most of all, I just want to contact my loved ones. The Butcha City Council relies largely on donations to get to the winter. A foreign NGO gave this generator, but it's not powerful enough to cover all the needs. Back in the capital, Kyiv, electricians work day and night to repair and maintain the city grid. But despite all their efforts, the situation remains critical. The strategy is first of all to restore the electricity supply however we can so that people have some. We can't always stick to schedule or return equipment to how it was before the war. But the temporary solutions, like planned power cuts, are working, so people are getting some light to their homes. But the capacity that existed before the war is no longer there, and that's a problem. A problem that is likely to continue throughout the winter here, with temperatures often dropping well below freezing, and no end in sight to Russian airstrikes. All great work from Emmanuel Shahs, who filed that report in the Ukraine. Emma, good to see you. A couple of fundamental questions coming from that. How do people cope with power cuts in the middle of winter and what does that really mean for their everyday life right now? Good morning, Anthony. Um, well, you know, we've seen this uh, man, Victor, in the report. Just to give you an idea, he called us this morning and he said, please, could you say in your report that we haven't had electricity since you came? We just had one hour uh, there and we could warm up a little, but since uh, electricity was gone again. And that's very much what is happening for uh, millions of people here. The situation is slightly better here in the capital, Kiev. Since yesterday, there's 50% of households who have electricity, but that means that half of the people here still don't. And what it means is that they live in cold flats, they uh, cannot have a warm shower, shower, for example, they, you know, they don't have heat, they cannot simply 
put on a washing machine, you know, put on a wash on. Uh, that's all those things that makes life very complicated and uh, beyond, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the home comfort, I would say, they also cannot work because there's also no phone coverage in some areas uh, and they need to charge their computers, etc., etc. And that's why those invincibility uh, centers, such as the one we saw in the report, are crucial. Yeah, so the Russian strategy was to make life unbearable by ripping the power from the grid as winter arrived. Is that Russian strategy working? Well, what is working is that they definitely have a, a very negative impact on power facilities every single power facility in the country has been hit, has been damaged. Now, does that mean they don't work anymore? No, they are being repaired uh, and people are very, very hard at work uh, to, to, to uh, fix that as quick as possible. And the strategy that is definitely not working is uh, the one uh, that would be to discourage people, you know, to, to, to depress people, to make them uh, accept defeat. And that's not something Ukrainians are ready uh, to do. Of course, they're fed up that they don't have electricity. Of course, it's a very, very hard uh, way of life right now in Ukraine. But does that uh, deter them from continuing uh, fighting the aggression? The, that answer is definitely no. DW correspondent Emmanuel Shaz in Ukraine. Thank you.